In this video, I want to show you a plugin that can either take products or donations, but not both at the same time. It's one or the other. It's called Easy PayPal Payment Accept. And let's go install it right now. And we'll just do Easy PayPal. And it comes up down here. There we go. Install now. And as I say, it's not a very flexible plugin, but for certain functions, it's going to work fairly well. There's no settings link on here, so we have to look on the sidebar. We'll check under settings. And there it is down at the bottom. It doesn't use its full name. If you're wondering if this is the right one, it is WP PayPal Payment is the word they use. Okay, so everything is done from the settings page. Literally, what you set here is what's going to be on the page or on the widget. And by the way, you can't do something separate on the page and something separate in the widget. It's all whatever's here is here. Okay, so they do give you the instructions here for the short code and everything, so that's handy. You don't have to go back to their website for it. The widget title is set from here. As I say, nothing is set on the widget itself or on the page itself. So this is what you'd want to determine if you're having a widget. Put the title right there. Your PayPal address, obviously, to begin with. Now, the currencies, you don't have much to choose from on this. It's very, very limited. And again, you'd have to go in and modify the plugin itself to use some other payment currency. Payment subject. Now, this is a bit of an odd one because typically you're going to have, like on our page here for our evaluation services, where are we here? our evaluation services, right? I've got my own text here and I just want to put in a button. But here you do have a place where if you didn't have anything else, you could put this in. This is separate from the widget title, by the way. And that can be a bit confusing too, because you might want to just put all your information in the widget title right here, but there's also this payment subject. Now, if you leave this payment subject blank, that's okay, you can leave it blank, but there will still be a space in the HTML, and we'll talk some more about that as we go along. So what you do here is you can enter one payment option. It's a drop-down menu, is what the user will see. You could have just one item on the drop-down menu, but you could have several, up to six here. If you don't want anything in payment option, leave it blank. And when you're putting in the price, just make sure you put in this with no currency title in it. No symbol at all in it. Okay. Then, if you want a donation button, what you want to do is check off this box here, and it will leave a place for the person to enter an amount. Tick this checkbox if you want visitors to have a reference text, something they can enter in. I'm not totally sure why you want this, but there might be some particular information you wanted. In this case, they're asking for an email address. You're going to get the email address when the order comes in from PayPal anyway, so I'm not sure exactly what they're asking for here, but it's something you can put in. Again, if you untick it, it's still going to be in the HTML, which again is going to cause us a few problems later, as we'll see. And down below, you're choosing your payment button type. So it's either a donation or a pay now for a product or service. And then you can choose your return URL when they're done at PayPal. Okay. Let's do this. I'm going to leave off the amount right now because we're going to assume it's a services payment we're putting in here. Okay. So we'll update our options. And then we grab this short code right here. And we're going to copy that. We're going to go to our services page here. And let's just plug that in. You can do it through the visual editor. You just plug in your short code there. We update the page. And then when we refresh, now there's that subject line, right, that I didn't really want, but I included it to show you what it looks like. And here's our drop down of those different services. So again, I'd have to change the way my page works because I'm sort of separating these out here. I'd have to put them both together and explain all my services and then have the drop down button at the end of it, which is fine. There's that email address, remember that it was looking for, and the pay now button. So let's go back. And I'm going to get rid of a few of these things. 
So I don't need this payment subject in here. There's my services. I'm going to get rid of that email address. I don't really want to ask for that. And I update my options, and then we'll see the results here. Now what you're going to find is, remember I said it leaves that space up at the top, even though we took out that subject line, it's still got a space there. So that's a bit odd. And unfortunately, in the HTML, it has line breaks built in, and it has inline styling, unfortunately. Let's take a quick peek. If I go in here and I inspect the element, you'll see what happens here if I open up the form. There's all those line breaks, and the font sizing is determined by inline styling. There's not a lot of movement here for us to change things in our CSS. They make it very difficult for us, so that's a bit of a drawback to this. Now let's go back for a moment. I'm going to turn this into a donation button. And how do I do that? Well, I get rid of these. And I'm just going to clear all those out. I leave those blank, and then I tick this checkbox here. They can enter a custom amount, and I will change this over to a Donate button. Let's update our options here. And when we refresh, we now have a donation. Now, I'd need to explain that it's a donation. The wording Other Amount, right, I can't change that, unfortunately. It just says Other Amount, which, of course, it isn't really an Other Amount. We're asking for a donation, but anyway, you could put more wording yourself in here to explain some of this. Now, here's the unfortunate part is, remember I got rid of everything in my drop-down menu. Well, unfortunately, it still leaves us with a drop-down menu. So I'd have to maybe use CSS to get rid of that, or again, you could go in and work with the plugin files themselves, but that's not a great idea because if it gets updated, that all gets erased. So there's definitely a few little problems with this plugin. But for certain things, it could work just fine. If you had multiple services in a drop-down menu, for example, it could work quite nicely for that. So fairly limited use for this one called Easy PayPal Payment Accept.